Hey guys, welcome back to Broken Bones. Reindigenizing the digital mind. So reindigenizing the digital mind. Putting our feet back into the earth, into our earth soul, so we can connect what we want in life to manifest. But also searching, searching inside ourselves the things that might be getting in the way of that. Today I am out at uh, my uncle's farm, so my father grew up, a place I remember so well as a child, uh, running around, telling stories and being fascinated with nature and all the stories of the place, ghost stories, fairy stories, all the magic I was surrounded by then, and all the bird song which I hear today in a beautiful spring day in County Fermanagh and where I'm standing right now is a very powerful magic place it was for me then and it is for me now this is a fairy fort yes circular field I heard so many stories about this when I was growing up and that tree over just behind me and this bank where the fairies live and it's also it sits high up on top of a, a field just beside my grandparents or my uncle's home place and this would have been a this would have been back in the day a place for a, a homestead and the soil was carried up here to make this circular fort but it holds so much power so many hawthorn trees in blossom and many other trees right now and i used to hear stories about the fairies coming out at night to dance in this fort coming out from the banks dancing in the circle and having a good shindig up the shenanigans causing mischief and when I'm here I feel my soul again my earth soul in such peace I wonder do you have somewhere in your life some place some special place as a child even as an adult place where you can connect with your innocence Some place where you're at peace inside yourself. And even with the turmoil of our rational, highly defined world, things become simple. Your breath returns. You step into innocence. And all things are possible. Today I want to talk about something that's been burning in my chest which is one of the things I do now when I want to make a video it's it's this tension that exists inside of me right here and almost feels like it's taking my breath away but that tension is a very precious gift I've come to be very grateful and in, in my work with people in my work with myself essentially this tension is a magical thing I'm not talking about resistance and emotions that are brought up around certain feelings. People cross your boundaries and you want to run away or you want to engage with it or you freeze. I'm talking about this tension that comes up purely born from an inner place where something needs and really rises up, wails up inside that needs to be spoken, expressed, touched. And we're often told, or taught, educated, to get rid of the tension. Tension's not good, no good at all. Distract yourself, video games, TV, food, get rid of that tension, it'll go away. And I don't know if, you, if you're the same as me, but many, many years of burying that tension was catastrophic. And I don't say that word lightly, it's catastrophic and I would say it's one of the it's one of the roots that process in depression a sense of powerlessness over a very long period of time and it buries our sense of wonder and potentiality what are we here for 
what am I? How, how am I to show up in the world? What needs to be expressed? What's my soul journey? Maybe some of those words resonate with you and whatever resonates and lands, let it land. You might, there may be resistance to it landing, but hear the truth in it. And maybe you recognize what I mean by tension. For me, tension is different than resistance. Resistance is also very useful and we're also taught to, to bury resistance or to bypass it somehow. But our body is always trying to communicate something. It's in a highly intelligent, sentient organism that's inextricably or unifiably connected to your soul. Your soul inhabits, but it is also your soul, your earth soul. And I mean earth soul is the soul of the lower centers, your manifestation, your incarnation into this world. Now I'm going to take you over to my special tree, a tree that I spent so much time around as a child and, and I never questioned it. I never, I never thought about this tree in the sense of, oh, it's a separate thing. It was always a beautiful place to be. And as you can see, all the, if you can see, all the primrose growing around it and the many plants here, spring plants. And there also is a very sad thing as well, as you, you can see, if we get a little bit closer to the tree, there's not much light, I'm in the shade now. But there's a fence, as you can see behind me now, there's a fence that's growing into the tree that's been put up against it for many years. and. It makes me feel very sad and I would love to cut it out and at the same time I guess it shows the growth of the tree and the resilience that it's it's taken that invasion it's part of it now and it survived very strong so what I want to really speak about is is two important things. Things that I, I'm working with a lot at the minute inside myself and also what I want to manifest in the world and this may resonate with you. You may have many things you want to manifest. And the two things that I've spent a lot of time struggling with in my life as a as a herbalist and I would say a coach or a health coach. There's many words I can put to it. Um, two words that jump up is health and wealth. And I've spent a lot of time recently considering this, these two concepts, these two ideas. And what jumps up for me is everywhere I have went in the world, and it, a lot of this is about my own programming, of course, and what other people tell me, all I see around me at the minute is poverty and disease or if we put them in their natural order as I said health and wealth it would be disease and poverty and I wonder how do I see that how do I hear this so much if what I want and what I teach and um, what other people I hear want and desire is wealth and health abundance of health and wealth So much of the conversation is about disease and poverty. Or another word for poverty, at least in my childhood, and also, and I see in this Western world of, of banking systems, power structures that feed the few or empower the few and exploit the many, is debt. So almost a sense of having a sense of wealth is actually is a false sense in this society in many ways because all this wealth comes from an enormous amount of debt, 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 debt accumulation. And it's so, so wrong. It hurts so much. I feel the fear and, and loss in that. that. That's what we spend in a lot of our energy on 
a lot of our creative, powerful, powerful sentient energy, generating debt with the perception of wealth and trying to become healthy with a, a mono oleopathic aggressive attack on disease. Now you can use many words. I hope you feel and sense what I mean. And what also showed up for me in that place is how 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 are we in this? How are we how are we thinking this way? How do we end up thinking this way? In many ways, yes, it suits the the, the few, and it's not a conspiracy in the sense of it's hidden. We're, we're very aware of it. It suits the few to exploit the many. And that's been a story of our civilization for a very long time. And when I talk to people about this, as I had many conversations with myself, how do we break this cycle? First step is recognition, acknowledgement, that there is a cycle and that we are part of it and we feed that in ourselves and generate that in front of us in the sense that all our past experiences have taught us that the only way to proceed is the way we've always proceeded and when our future ends up in the same place and we can't manage to fix it or correct it in a way that's enough then we end up back reinforced into the belief that I can't get enough, I am not enough And I feel, I feel power leaving my power structure when I speak on these terms, very destructive, defining, restrictive. Story, and it is story. All these stories were born somewhere. We've all bought into it. It serves no purpose at all to to blame ourselves or to castrate ourselves or to ruin ourselves through it. And something from from where I can sense now the truth and what's obvious is it's been sitting with me all day is this incessant, persistent need to know. I need to know everything about everything about everything about everything before I can move forward. Think about it. Someone comes to you with a a beautiful, wonderful idea. Okay? And yes, it is useful to pay due diligence and fact check and to look at what's obvious. Is this, does this feel right for one? Is this obviously a good thing for me? Is it obvious that this aligns with my value system? These are important questions. And it's almost from what place I ask them that are important. So what's in my immediate moment? I have an opportunity, right? I want to I want to create um, a platform to help people empower themselves from their own power, not my power, not enforce my power, but find their power and discover that power and work with it because it needs work. Persistence persistence in a place of joy and connectedness to oneself and from that place I can ask obvious questions like is that true do I want that yes I do so what's the obvious next step for me to go along that road what's obvious right now that I can do and without getting my rational mind involved at this point I ask my innocent self, my 
magic self, the, the self that wandered around this fairy fort as a child, that self who seen wonder and potential everywhere and magic everywhere, that's the self. Now some people might say, oh come on, talking with the fairies, Neil, really? Well, that's the very thinking that blocks your potential and your creative genius. And if I want to build this, this is the type of needing to know that I'm not talking about, which is questions and I can say, I can engage my mind to say, oh, I don't know, it seems like a big investment. Do I have the skills for it? What is it going to look in five years? Will this fail? What am I going to look like? I mean, are people going to laugh at me? Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. That's not possible. This only happens to people with, you know, real genius. I don't have genius at all. I mean, if I was a genius, I'd be making loads of money and I'd be very successful and happy and I could use those resources how I want. But I'm not a genius. I couldn't possibly know. I mean, come on, it's a lot of work, right? Could I do that? Do you recognize that monkey, crazy monkey mind going? Well, I can tell you, that way of thinking, that way of thinking has blocked my creativity for a very long time and my genius self. And I, for one, am not prepared to feed it any longer. And yes, I'm not naive. My monkey mind's always going around trying to distract me from this and that. And so, working with myself and anyone else who chooses to work with me, it's about building a new power structure that gives you confidence in your next step. And we need support around this. If, like me, when you lie in bed at night and your mind goes in all places, it's very draining, it pulls our power energies, and it that energy just gets dissipated, and that tension inside just disappears. I don't need you, or I don't need to compare myself to others. Oh, you know, I have to be like Elon Musk, or Steve Jobs, or, you know... Mother Teresa, if you like, or I need to be kind of only star people do this, you know, these creative people, these geniuses, I'm not like that. And when I compare myself to that, my mind kicks in and shows me, you know, I can't be like that. So the comparison thing is also a big thing because it's part of the same process I need to know. I need to know if I'm capable, I need to know if I'm good enough, I need to know if this will work out, I need to know the risks, I need to know no, 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 no. And you know what happens? If I say that, I need to know, no, 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 no. Did you get that? Because I just got it. We end up with a bunch of no's. That's devastating. Absolutely devastating. And I can feel it in my body system. And how that also is connected to health and wealth is if we're staying in this destructive, demeaning, reductionist way of thinking and this incessant need to know, we generate disease and poverty. It's, it's, it's there for, it, it, the proof is there. Proof's in my life. Nothing more soul killing than that process. And it's not a question of fixing it. Oh, I'll just think wealth and health. Wealth and health, law of attraction, just attracting health and wealth all the time. If that's overlaid or superimposed on the old structure of 
disease and poverty, eventually it'll get exposed. Eventually when it doesn't come, in those moments of doubt, you'll go, oh, when's it going to come? When? Needing to know. But what if it doesn't? Question in the future. Need to know. Boom. Reinforced. Not possible. So the only way out of that that I've discovered is building a new structure. And as in the Lao Tzu said in the, the Tao Te Ching, when you become sick of the sickness, then health abounds. And I have, since I arrived back in Ireland, realized I don't know nothing about what's going to happen next. And that's the magic. And I've been generating a, a future moment while in the present fixated on the past. That I know a lot about. And that needing to know leads me into the same place. Maybe that's what the fairies do. If I don't know myself and I can't come in a place of innocence, in a place of wonderment, with not needing to know, if I don't do that, then they're going to lead me into into a divilment, into sabotage, where I'll trip over myself because I'm in my way. <laughs> and I was always told this as a kid, if you come to the fairies with a pure heart, though I didn't know what that was, because I, if I thought about it, then I lost it, which of course is true. As an innocent child, children see these things. And here's the beauty of, of all of this. With a new power structure and stepping into your innocence and not needing to know, and I'll say it again, not needing to know, stepping into your innocence, looking at your moment, if you, and what's obvious in that moment, being present with that moment, then you can make it up. You can make up anything you want. And that inner knowledge and power in you will grow and your joy will grow. And that making up is where it's at. Make it up from that place. There I can help you as I help myself. And to me, that is re-indigenizing the digital mind. It could also be seen in other ways where returning to the indigenous soul connects us to our inner power and our inner purpose not a thought out purpose, a one that unfolds like a mystery. A mystery unknown and the beauty of life is there. And having that is the magic. And making it up from there is the magic. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 I want that, and that's what I am. So allow that to filter down inside of you, and you'll find resistance to it, and that's okay. You'll find tension it might rise up for your own voice and your own instinct and intuition urging you into action. And that's the action. That's what the Taoists talk about. Action, no action. Or action, non-action. That's an action that you're not even aware of what it's about. You don't need to know. Acting on it 
leads to that's the way that's the Tao that's that's the path that's that's the only place you have ever been and that's that's how you return actually that's the truth if truth is resonating for you right now then what I'm sharing No, it is resonating with you right now. With it is out there because it's what I am and what I do, this is my path and I put myself out there and you can put yourself out there in a way that we have not been taught to do enough. And I can tell you that the greatest fear that people that I've seen and I've heard in many circles, and not for everyone, I can say it and it resonates with me, one of the greatest fears maybe the only one, is the fear of stepping into our power. Ooh, you know, touching that place of potentiality and living your soul's journey here. Feel the fear, feel the tension, look at what's obvious and what your next step is. Your mind will try to look ahead, but always return to breath and what's obvious, what's the next step? What can I do right now that's aligned with that tension? And the rest will unfold like a beautiful mystery, a beautiful mystery that you are, that I am, and all sent in life on this planet is. Be there with it. And please subscribe. And uh, click the little bell too if you want to be notified for new videos. Follow this, even resistance. Ask yourself, what's the resistance about? Watch the videos. If you get more worth out of this, please share and comment. And if you can, make this video about you, not about me. I know you love me and I know you care about me and I know you like what I'm doing, especially those who know me really well. But ask yourself what the video says for you and how it can help you. That's all I ask. And thank you until next time from this beautiful fairy fort surrounded by primroses. Stay with yourself. Stay true to yourself. And everything will be what it's meant to be. Until next time, guys, take care. Love, light, and earth.